Okay, um, my name is Regina Bauckham. I'm an associate professor in the Ecology and Evolutionary Biology Department here at UM. And I get to introduce Dr. Andy Jones, who is an associate professor in nutritional sciences um, in, uh, oh gosh, I'm blanking. Public health. Public health. <laughs> <laughs> um, and there's a lot I could say about Andy, but actually he told me to keep it short. So I'm just going to say Andy is great. So. <laughs> All right. It's uh, good to be here. Good to see a, a packed room for fast food for thought after a lot of years. Uh, so thanks for everyone for being here. Um, I'm going to talk today about um, uh, some experiments we did in the Michigan dining halls over the past uh, several semesters here. So, uh, though we often think about climate change as being dr driven by our use of fossil fuels to power industry, transport, le the electrical uh, grid, agriculture really is an important part of what's been driving climate change. Um, agriculture, the clearing of forests for pasturing animals, accounts for about a quarter of all greenhouse gas emissions globally. The largest proportion of food-related emissions are from animal agriculture, especially cattle. Um, this is in large part because producing beef requires about 15 to 20 calories of feed to produce a single calorie of meat. And also because cattle belch out lots of methane while they're grazing, which is a very potent greenhouse gas. So reducing consumer demand for beef is among the, the strategies with the highest potential for sustainably reducing food system emissions. Um, behavioral nudges, as they've been called, are one approach that's been suggested to influence this consumer demand or to change consumer food preferences. Nudges attempt to alter behavior without restricting options or significantly changing uh, economic incentives. Nudges have to be cheap and they have to require minimal intervention. Uh, consumer information labels are one example of nudges. Such labels on food have been shown to be effective and shifting consumer food choices towards healthier food choices. Um, however, very few studies have been conducted using similar environmentally focused labels. So in the winter term of last year, uh, colleagues and I, building on prior collaboration, collaborative work with Michigan Dining, the residential dining program here at U of M, ran an experiment using this sort of traffic light style labels, like you saw on the last slide here, sort of the, the green, red, or yellow and red. Um, and putting these on, on menus at Michigan Dining. Uh, carbon labels account for the emissions generated throughout the production cycle of a product, often using a life cycle emissions uh, calculation approach. They've been, they've been around for about 20 years or so in some markets, but they've not really been widely used on food products. So we, our aim was to use these traffic light style symbols, these menu icons on, on service menus, to, to see if we could decrease the, the, the consumption or the demand for high carbon dishes in the dining halls. And we hypothesized that exposure to these menu items, icons, would decrease demand for those items. So we had uh, an experimental design. We had three dining halls that were control dining halls and three that were experimental, where they received this intervention with these carbon labels. Uh, we had a four-week baseline period, followed by a 10-week intervention period. And we did our best to match the menus across these different dining halls, the, the, the control and the intervention ones. And we tried to quantify estimates of food service at all of the, uh, at each meal station. Uh, working with some professional graphic designers in the Graham Sustainability Institute, which also funded this work, um, and following a series of focus groups with students testing various icon designs, we landed on this set of menu icons that you can see here. And here's what they look like on the actual menu. They're, they're quite small, and you can see that they're embedded right alongside other iconography in the menus that have sort of other, other menu um, you know, icons for vegetarian or vegan, whatever it might be. Um, the label is applied to the dish as a whole and represents the embedded emissions of each choice based on data from something called the Data Field Emissions Database, which contains cradle to farm gate emissions values for about 300, 300 so foods. So these data here show that the mean amount of high carbon or red labeled items uh, that were served per person by week during the, uh, in, in our first pair of dining halls, so our, our intervention versus control. The, the blue there is intervention and the maize color is our control. 
And you can see here that there's a sort of classic interaction effect where with, with more items served at the baseline in the inter intervention dining hall, and then that declined over time, and the amount in the control, the control dining hall actually uh, crossed there. So you can see this effect. So this was actually a statistically significant effect that we saw. There was this, this actual difference in this one dining hall pair. We did not see this in our other two dining hall pairs, however, though. So we saw some potential effect in one pair, but not in the rest. So what we take away from this, um, it looks like these carbon menu icons may have decreased demand for some high carbon dishes um, in one of our dining hall pairs. So we saw a 26% decline um, in, in the demand for this. And this is higher than we've seen in other studies, which is about like five or 6%. But in practical terms, these declines aren't super large. Um, we didn't see a lot of impact on demand for lower carbon dishes. Um, and we, there, there may have been some issues with unmeasured confounding or menu mismatching that was a part of this design. So again, we're trying our best to uh, attribute causality, but there was may, maybe some challenges there. And finally, I'll say that nudges are likely not sufficient to reduce food-related emissions um, at the pace that we need. I view nudges um, sort of with their incremental reductions in demand for red meat as a transition strategy um, for reducing food emissions until the technology and the markets for cultivated meat, or what we often call clean meat, or lab-grown meat, can scale up to meet consumer demand for beef and other meats, but without the emissions or animal welfare concerns of our, of our current food system. So thanks very much. <laughs>